Hey guys, this is Max Steinberg, and welcome to another edition of the Lineup Lab. Um, today I'm going to take the opportunity to look at some of the top lineups in the Millionaire Maker and just try to learn from them, see what did they did wrong, see what they did right, and try to improve our GPP game overall. So I've actually looked at some of the top lineups already, and the funny thing is, is that I actually feel like I learned about what the more about something the field is not doing than learn something from looking at the top lineups. And uh, because I think the top lineups are, were actually flawed a little bit in a way, but they recovered from it by doing something that isn't really that creative. And I really feel like the field should be doing, but, but it seems like they really just overlooked this this week. So I'm just gonna get right into it. So the top lineup of the Millionaire Maker right now is this guy named Keezy. And the thing that stands out to me about Keezy's lineup might be not what you think, um, and I don't think is the reason he won the Millionaire Maker. So what you might think is the fact he used Doug Baldwin and Russell Wilson, and that certainly did win him the Millionaire Maker this week, but I think in theory it it wasn't that great of a play. I don't think that Doug Baldwin has a ton of upside. I think he's improved this season, but... I think he basically had a once-in-a-lifetime game. I don't think he will ever have a game like this again. I think he was pretty fortunate to have that breakaway 70-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter. Um, as for Russell Wilson, I do believe he's capable of 30-plus point fantasy point games. So I think that was a, a smart move by Keys to use Russell Wilson here. And uh, I would look for him to have, especially with running QBs like Wilson, to have these type of games in the future. But, and it, I think the pairing was fine. I think it's fine for a GPP, but I just think he was really fortunate here to have Baldwin have done so well. But I really think what Kesey did right here was he used some really low-owned receivers in Jarvis Landry, Julius Thomas, and Amari Cooper, who all have high upside and just sort of had, just were overlooked for various reasons. I mean, I think one of the reasons was just the way things panned out this week with salaries is there are several low salary running backs that were the clear plays. There are a bunch of low salary quarterbacks that there were clear plays. There wasn't really a high salary tight end that people were all over. And so what ended up happening is there's all this money to spend on wide receiver and people jumped on it by using guys like Odell Beckham, 40%, DeAndre Hopkins, 50%. Uh, Julio Jones, Larry Fitzgerald, using all those guys a lot, which I think you'd make an argument that on its own, it's not great to be using a wide receiver that's going to be used by 50% of the field. But I'm not going to make that argument because I do think most weeks Hopkins has a good game and same as Odell Beckham Jr. But I think what ends up happening is you end up using too little of these quality players with high upside like Landry and Thomas and it, you just shouldn't be overlooking these guys in your lineups, even if you're making five or 10 lineups and not 50 or 100. You know, Jarvis Landry had a good matchup against the Jets. They were without Darrell Rivas, and they were an underdog in this game, so they likely were going to be passing quite a bit. And uh, Landry is a guy who can get, you know, 10 receptions, he can get touchdowns. He's a high upside guy, and uh, it, it's not surprising to see him have a 30-plus fantasy point game. I'd say with Julius Thomas, it was a little more surprising, although we know he's a great player and is capable and just sort of is learning the Jacksonville offense. But he was he's definitely a guy that it doesn't shock us to see him get um, 100 yards receiving and a touchdown, uh, maybe maybe for someone else views it differently, but for me it wasn't too shocking. And Amari Cooper, it's really, really not shocking to see him have seven receptions for 115 yards here. And I think this is what sort of saved Kesey in this Millionaire Maker is because he really made a mistake here by using Thomas Rawls and Russell Wilson because there's just too few points to go around. I think he's lucky that A, Seattle scored 39 points, and B, that there weren't really any running backs that scored a large amount of fantasy points aside from Adrian Peterson this week. Uh, I think the top second guy was Spencer Ware, and most of the other guys didn't crack 18 points. And so 
essentially he was saved here by the fact that just Rawls didn't have much competition this week, and that's fortunate for him. And then he was just very fortunate that Seattle is a team that hasn't been scoring 30-plus points in any game this year, scored 39. But what what saved him was just using these guys who really have no business being this low on, they really should be higher on, and them sort of going off and having good games and uh, also getting lucky with this Wilson-Baldwin stack. And so I really think that – I don't think Kesey made any – special like that special of a lineup here i think that he was very fortunate like anyone who'd win the millionaire maker obviously but i think what this goes to show is is finding these guys like jarvis landry and amari cooper and julius thomas who have that upside and are just not someone that screams out at you because they don't have that great matchup or they haven't had a great previous game or something if you can look for these players in gpps i think it's really really helpful so I would say I'm going to do some more videos this week. I'm going to look for some of these plays and try to point them out to you because I really think these type of plays can be the keys to winning the Millionaire Maker in future weeks. All right, thanks for joining me in the lineup lab and look for more videos later in the week. Thanks, guys.